Hey everybody, Matt with Option Omega here. Today we're going to be looking at SPX and SPY. This is our Backtester Basics series. If you're a more advanced option trader, this may not be a video you enjoy. But for everybody else, especially beginners, this may be helpful. Right now I've got a uh, chart pulled up of SPY in real time. We're at 426. And we'll go look at SPX. It's at 4270. Now what's interesting is if you notice... SPX is about 10 times what SPY is. It's not exactly 10 times SPY, it's about 10 times SPY. So if we were to move the decimal point over, we'd be at 427.30. And as you can see, SPY is not at 427.30. It's close. Uh, you can also do it just if you look at the, yeah, if you look at the um, percent change, it's a little bit different too. So what's important to know is it's about 10 times as much. It's not exactly 10 times as much. They will backtest pretty similar. I was, um, let's try, okay, this is the only, this is a quick one. So I was just actually playing around with this because we're in a kind of a volatile market. I was just playing around some bear call spreads and I've picked this one because it's a short test. So it's only um, this year to date. So uh, we've traded this 10 times uh, and it's had seven winners, uh, just doing this trade right here. So this is a bear, bear call spread for new people, bear call spread trading it this year. Here's my, uh, entry conditions here. I'm only trading it when the VIX is high. Okay. So this is kind of a, a buy the dip type mentality. And right now I've got it trading on SPX. Again, we've got a 70% win rate. Let's run this with spy and see what our win rate is. Boom. There we go. We also have a 70% win rate. So the rest of the numbers are going to be different. Uh, obviously, your, your entry conditions, if you don't change them, will be the same your starting capital, but things like your ending capital, even your capture rate and premium, those are all going to be different. So what are the differences between SPY and SPX? Oh, you can see, whoops, Twitter just accepted Elon's buyout deal. There we go. We're not a news YouTube channel, but sometimes it happens. So SPY is an ETF. These are both based on the S&P 500, okay? So this is the actual index, um, the S&P 500 index. And uh, this is, a, people will call it the spider, okay? This is an ETF that is more akin to what people think of when they traditionally think of ETFs. It's called the spider. It's run by State Street. They're one of the, the big boys. And this, they're both... Uh, proxies for the market, right? They both represent the S&P 500. And when people say the market, this is kind of what, you know, they're referencing a lot of times, the S&P 500. So why would you run options on SPY versus SPX? What's the difference? SPX is a lot bigger. So are SPY options cheaper? Yes, they are. That's one of the main reasons people start. People get attracted to the low price of the SPY options. But what I'm going to do is we're, we're going to use an additional resource. This is a really helpful comparison. I'm actually going to link this reference material in the notes below. This actually comes from the CBOE. So this is the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. And they actually have a lot of great educational um, resources if you check them out. I'm going to link this particular one again in the, in the notes below. So this goes through and kind of shows you the, the different options on the, the, the SPX. So these are all, again, representative of the S&P 500. The ones we're going to be concerned about are uh, the SPX options chain and SPY. I'll explain what this is here in a minute. But there are two key differences, okay? What most people consider key differences. With SPY, you can own the ETF, so if you want to buy the market, there's a lot of people who do investing retirement strategies of buying the market. A lot of people buy SPY, okay? You can do that. You cannot do that with SPX. That's one of the main differences. I would say one of the other main differences that a lot of people are focused on, there are several, but one of the other main differences is the tax benefits. There are some different tax qualifications with SPX that benefit most people. Again, we're not accountants, we're not tax attorneys, we're none of that, but 
the tax treatment is set up to be different. So a lot of people gravitate towards SPX. What is common between both SPX and SPY is that they both have tremendous liquidity. If you look at a, uh, a chart, a daily chart of options volume by ticker, SPY and SPX are usually both at the top. Let me talk about XSP for a second. SXP is a mini SPX option. And you might think, well, isn't that what SPY is? No, that's not what SPY is. We just kind of went through the SPY shares you can own. XSP, like SPX, does not have does not have the ability to own shares. They are cash settled. So this is something else that people like is at the end of the day, if you have a trade on, your account will be either debited or credited depending on how your trade goes. That's a European style of where the market ends up. That is with both XSP and SPX. Now, one thing about XSP, it's a newer product. There is not a lot of volume. So SPY and SPX both have a tremendous amount of liquidity. XSP does not have it. So you can go through and read uh, some of the other things, uh, some of the other differences. SPX has a little bit longer hours than SPY does. Um, again, I'm going to link this fact sheet below, but hopefully uh, you can see that you can test both of them very easily. This is optionalmega.com. This is our back tester. So you can do annual or monthly plans if you just want to try it out. Uh, also, if you like and subscribe the video, that would help. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day and we'll catch you on the next one.